have your Bibles, I'd like to ask you to please turn to 3 John. There are three little books toward the end of the New Testament. You have the Gospel of John, and then you have 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, three very small books of the Bible toward the end of the New Testament. You have 3rd John, the whole book just consists of 14 verses. would like to read the first four verses of 3rd John. The Word of God says in 3rd John, beginning with verse 1, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, <clears throat> evidently Gaius was sick physically, and he said, I love you and I Hope that soon you'll physically be as strong as you are spiritually. I, I pray, he says, I wish above all things that thou, hast, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. But I would ask you this morning, would you like to be in the same physical health and financial condition as your soul is in? In other words... Is your soul very close to God, lifted up, very strong, full of the Spirit of God, or is your soul weak? I think there are many people that physically and financially they may be up here, but their soul may be down here. And Gaius, his soul was way up here, but financially and physically he was down here. So he said, I'm praying that God will bless you financially and physically to be as strong as you are spiritually. And then in verse 3 the word of God says, For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. The truth was in him, and he was walking in the truth. John, in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, John speaks about truth about 20 times in these very three short, very short books. Truth was important to John the Apostle. Truth was important to Jesus. Jesus says they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Word of God tells us that Thy word is truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. So truth is something that's emphasized repeatedly in the word of God. Some people today say, well, it doesn't really matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. I want you to know it matters to God what you believe. Truth is very important. The word of God is truth. We must believe the Word of God and believe all the Word of God, we must walk in the truth as well as believe the truth. He says, I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. Then he says in verse 4, he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. The first thing that's on my heart this morning is to look at the first phrase in that verse of scripture where he says, I have no greater joy. If I say I love you as much as I love anyone else, that puts you on the same height as everyone else. If I say I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth, that doesn't mean that's the greatest joy, but it, it's among those great joys that I have. I have no other joy that's greater than that my children walk in truth. I know the feeling that John had when he wrote those words, both 
physically, naturally, my natural children and grandchildren, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And you notice the wording there says, doesn't say, I have no greater joy than to hear or than to see my children walk in truth. You see the difference? Because my eyes are kind of warped when it comes to my children. But now you can see my children in a much better, clearer light than I can. And so if I hear that my children are walking in truth, if I hear from other people that my children are walking in truth, if that's the testimony that other people have about my children is that they're walking in truth, do you understand that's even better than me just seeing that they're walking in truth? I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. Now that's true, I think, naturally, of a, physically of our natural children. But I believe that John is speaking primarily about spiritual children that he had. And the Apostle Paul talks about how there are many teachers, but there are not many fathers. And in that passage in Corinthians, he's not talking about a natural father, he's talking about spiritual fathers. He's talking about men of God that look at all the people of God, they look at them as their children. They watch over them, they protect them, they correct them, they feed them, they do the things spiritually that a natural father does for his children. And John was a father to many, and uh, Paul was a father to many. Paul called Timothy his son, and I believe that, that John had many that he would call his sons, and he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children, that's brothers and sisters in Christ that he's been working with, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Now, I want us to go back first to that I have no greater joy. You know, that's a great joy, isn't it? Isn't it a great joy to you when you hear that your children are walking in truth? But even though that's a great, 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 wonderful joy, I want you to know there's a lot of other great joys the Word of God tells us that we ought to have. I ought to have a lot of great joys. You and I, as children of God, we ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. We ought to be full of joy. Jesus often spoke and said, I've written these things unto you that your joy may be Full, John, in the beginning of his epistle, he says, I've written these things unto you that your joy may be full. You ought to be full of joy. The people of God have a lot to rejoice in. One of the things you might rejoice in is to hear that your children are walking in truth. But I want you to know even if you don't have any natural children, I want you to know there are a lot of other things you have to rejoice in besides that one wonderful truth. There are many things you have to rejoice about. Let's look now because this elevates this uh, statement in 1 John chapter, uh, 3 John 4. It elevates it when you look at all these other joys because what he says here, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. So if I look at some of the other joys I have and I look at how great those joys are, it makes me realize this is on the same level and the same plane as all these other joys. So let's look at just two or three great joys that we have besides this joy that John is speaking about. Back up in your Bibles, please, to Luke. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. In Luke chapter 2, the Word of God tells us about the shepherds that were abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. They were faithful shepherds, and the angel came to them, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And Luke chapter 2, listen please to verses 10 and 11. Luke 2 verses 10 and 11, the word of God says, And the angel said unto them, that's to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of what? What are the next two words? Great joy. 
I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Brethren, this is some great joy to all of God's people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Brethren, I have great joy to know my Savior was born. I have great joy in that truth. You cannot appreciate your Savior until you realize what a sinner you are. Oh, there are a lot of times in my life I've started over. A lot of times in my life I've thought, you know, I don't believe I'll ever sin again. I don't believe I'll ever get on the wrong track again. I don't believe I'll ever do this, that, and the other. But I find in my life, my heart is prone to wander. Prone to wander, the songwriter said. Prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. I sin and fall short of the glory of God. And therefore, I know I need a Savior. Brethren, I cannot save myself from eternal hell. I can't save you from eternal hell. I can't save my children from eternal hell. We all need a Savior. And the wonderful news is, the Savior came. Oh, he wasn't a weak Savior. Oh, a lot of people talk about a Jesus today that wants to save you if you'll just let him. Oh, that's a weak Savior. If you have to let him do something... You don't find anywhere in God's Word that God ever says to let God do something. You don't let God do anything. God does as He pleases in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay His hand or say unto Him, What doest thou? My Savior came and He saved His people from their sins. That's a wonderful Savior. <laughs> he saved me from my sins. That's great news. I bring you great news. I bring you great joy. A Savior was born. Jesus was born. And he lived an absolutely perfect life. By the way, when I mention a Savior was born, I want you to always remember that Savior had to be born of the Virgin Mary. I want you to always remember Jesus Jesus' real father was the God of heaven and earth. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary and she conceived and bare a son. He was born different than any other human being that's ever been born. He was born without sin. And that's great joy to me. Because if he had been born like me and you, he could not have been an acceptable sacrifice for our sins. So he was born without sin, and then he lived an absolutely perfect life. I find great joy in reading about Jesus and knowing that he never sinned, not one time. He never had an evil thought. He never did anything wrong. There was never an evil feeling in his heart. In his mind, in his soul, Jesus was absolutely perfect. He pleased the Father. He kept the word of God. He did the will of the Father. He said, "My, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. I'll tell you, brethren, Jesus came born of a virgin Mary. That's great news. He lived an absolutely perfect life. That's great news. He died on the cross of Calvary. Now, that sounds like sad news, but it was essential that he died on the cross of Calvary to save me from my sins. So it's great news. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And the blood of all those bl of goats and bulls and calves and turtle doves, all that blood never paid for a single sin. It took the blood of Jesus Christ to save you. I have great joy today because I know I'm saved. I know that my Jesus died for my sins. That's my only hope of being in heaven one day. It's not because I've tried to live right. It's not because of anything I've ever done. My only hope of being in eternal heaven and your only hope and everyone's only hope of ever being in eternal heaven is because God sent a Savior into this world and that's great news. But if you don't think you're a sinner, I'll tell you, you don't appreciate the Savior. It's until you feel the guilt of sin, until you have tried and tried to do right and you find you just don't make it. It's, a, it's as you realize that you fall short, then you realize how much you need a Savior. And you thank God. And it's great news.
that you have a Savior. And he died on the cross of Calvary. Oh, but if that was it, that, that wouldn't bring me great, 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 great joy. Maybe two great, but not three. I have great joy because he arose from the grave. Oh, that's great news. We sang that a while ago. I didn't ask that we sing it, but Brother Brooks, call that number out. He arose. Wasn't that one of the songs? He arose. He arose. And while we were singing that song, I thought, man, I've got great joy that he arose from the grave because the Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that if we believe that Jesus rose from the grave, we know that those also that are in Christ shall rise from the grave. I've got a daddy and a child in the grave plot that I'll, Lord willing, be buried in up there in Thomaston, Georgia. It doesn't grieve me to go by that grave occasionally. I probably haven't been by my daddy's grave a dozen times since he died. I haven't been by my son's grave over a dozen times. But when I go there, I don't feel great grief. I feel it's all right. They're home with the Lord. They're home with the Lord. And one day, now you might not believe this, one day my son's body and my daddy's body and the body of all the people of God so great that no man can, num no man can number, our bodies are going to be raised and the spirit that's already gone home to be with God is going to be reunited with the body and we're going to be conformed to the image of the Son of God and we're going to be carried home to be with the Lord forever in the eternal heaven. And I look forward to that day and me being there that day and you being there is all the cause of the good news of great joy that a Savior was born lived a perfect life, died on the cross of Calvary, and arose from the grave. And it's better than that. <laughs> it's not just that he's going to come back one day, but right now he is ruling and reigning as King of kings and Lord of lords. That's great news to me. I think I would probably try to take things in my own hands concerning some evil government rulers that we have, I think I would do something very ungodly if I didn't know God was on his throne. But God says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. And every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Brethren, right now, he is Lord. He is Lord. And I have great joy in knowing he's my Savior. And I have great joy in knowing he's my Lord. He is your Lord. He's alive today. He's already right now. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he rules over all the affairs of this world. And I have great joy in that. And John knew all about that great joy, and yet he says in 1 John chapter, 3 John chapter 4, he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Do you see how high that is when he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth, when you realize here's the great, great joy over here that Jesus was born and died and saved us from our sins. And he puts it on the same plane. He says, I have no greater joy. This is a great joy. But I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Turn to Matthew chapter 25. Here's another great joy. In Matthew 25, the five two and one talent servants. I want you to know, brethren, that that one talent servant was cast into outer darkness with his weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that's what will happen to me and that's what will happen to you if we don't take the gifts that God has given us and use them to his honor and glory. Let me tell you something, everybody here. If God's giving you a voice and you come into the house of God and you don't try to lift up your voice and make a joyful noise to the Lord, you're sinning against God. God gave you a talent. Did you know there are some people, the only time they really want to sing is they're going to put on a show for somebody. The only time they're going to really sing and lift up their voice is when they're performing for somebody. 
I want you to know when you come to the house of God, you better be opening your mouth and you better be making a joyful noise to the Lord. Otherwise, God's given you a talent and you're buried it. God's given you a life to serve Him in the church. And if you're not trying to serve the Lord in the house of God, if you're not trying to worship with God's people, if you're not trying to live like a Christian every day, you buried your talent. And you will, you will, I will be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm not talking about eternal hell. I'm talking about a hell that God's children, his servants, that was a servant of that Lord. But there were two other servants, the five-talent servant and the two-talent servant. And they took their talents and they used them. And when the Lord came back to judge them, the five-talent servant said, here's five other talents. Look at this. I first want you to know what this whole parable is about. Look at Matthew 25 verse 14. And every parable in this chapter is about the kingdom of heaven. Which is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. He says in Matthew 25 verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants. And delivered unto them his goods. Listen brethren. This Lord represents Jesus Christ as you follow and read this. The Lord here represents Jesus Christ. And he called unto him his own servants. Do you know who you belong to? Yeah. The same one that saved you. He paid for you. Body, soul, and spirit. Your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. And he called unto him his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. You know anything good in me, you know where it came from? It came from God. It's his goods in me. Verse 19 says, After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done. And I'll tell you, brethren, <clears throat> how many of you had daddies that really complimented you when you did something right? Probably not too many, but some of you did. But most, dad, most daddies don't realize how important it is for you to say, Son, you did a good job. There are some of you that I have said to you the same words that our father spoke to Jesus when he said, This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Those children that John was speaking about in 3 John verse 4. He could have said. These are my children in whom I am well pleased. I have no greater joy. Than to hear that my children walk in truth. Brethren it's important. I just want to interject here. It's important that every daddy says to your children, when they do a good job, it's important that you tell them, well done. You did a good job. <clears throat> the Lord came back, and the five talent servant who had gained five more talents, his Lord said to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the what? Joy. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enter into the what? I have no greater joy. Now, <laughs> the joy of entering the kingdom of heaven, is that a great joy when you're able to sit down in heavenly places and God blesses you to be in the kingdom of heaven and you experience that great joy of being in the kingdom of heaven. Is that great, great, great joy? Yes, it is. And yet John, who knew all about this, he knew about the great joy of his father saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant. This is the same man that was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. This is a man who died, a man who suffered for Christ. And his father was pleased with him and and he had a lot of children, and he said, I have no greater joy 
even entering the kingdom of heaven because I'll tell you this when I hear that my children are walking in truth you know where I'm at yeah. I'm in the kingdom of heaven I have no greater joy than to hear my father say to me well done thou good and faithful servant enter into the joy of thy Lord and he's not going to tell me that in the final resurrection brethren <laughs> I'm not going to heaven because I've been a good and faithful servant I've not been a good and faithful servant. It's only because of God's mercy and grace he would ever say to me, well done. But he does bless me to enter the kingdom of heaven based on my obedience to him. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk. All these other joys that you can mention, we could just go all through the word of God and think about there's no greater joy than to hear that our children walk in truth. You remember right here in Matthew 25, verse 21, he said, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He's entering into the presence of God. He's entering into fellow, he's entering, when you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you're, you're sitting down with the king in his kingdom. You're, you're having intimate fellowship with Jesus. And, and David says this, I think it's in Psalm 16 and verse 11. David says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. Had David experienced that of being in the presence of God? And what did he know came when you're in the presence of God? Fullness of joy. And yet I can say, I have no greater joy. All these joys that we could talk about. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. A lot of other scriptures I want to go to about joy I don't have time to. Let me just encourage you to go home and read what Peter says about that joy in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 through 8. 1 Peter 1 verses 6 through 8 and also in 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 12 and 13 brethren he's talking about great joy that the people of God have when they're willing to suffer for Christ's sake. Great joy. Weeping may endure for a night but what? A joy cometh in the morning. What did Jesus say on one occasion after his resurrection? Ought not Christ to have suffered and to enter into his glory? We want to enter, enter into his glory without first suffering. You can't do it. You cannot dwell in the kingdom of heaven without be willing, being willing to suffer for Christ's sake. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is when you're willing to suffer for Christ's sake, you will then experience great joy here in this world. Now, let me say in closing, what does it mean? John says in uh, 3 John verse 4, he says, I have no greater joy. All these other joys are real. All these other joys are wonderful, but I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. What does it mean to walk in truth? Well, it's expressed a number of ways in the Word of God. One of the many ways is found in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. We don't have time to turn to any of these, but one of the many ways that you walk in truth is by walking in all His commandments. That's the way you walk in truth. Or we can go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, where the Word of God says, Walk. In, what's the word, next word, walk in what? In Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, you know it. Walk in what? Love. Like, yes, walk in love. Walk in love. Walk in love. Is that walking in truth when you're walking in love? Absolutely. And God says, Jesus says, that we're to walk in the light. If you're walking in the light, you're walking in the truth. Because if you're walking in the light, you're walking in the footsteps of Jesus. You're following Jesus. And I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. 
the word of God is just full of further explaining what it means to walk in truth. And I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad you're saved. I'm glad Jesus has paid it all. And I have great joy in that truth and a lot of other truths are in God's word. But I have no greater joy. And I want you to know that when you've been on the wrong track and you're on the right track again, oh, it's like the father. I know he loved both his sons. But when, when one of those sons that had erred and he came back home, you remember what he did? He killed the fatted calf. He, he put a ring on his finger. And he put a robe on him. He did all that. Why? Because he was so happy. That his son that had been dead is now alive again. <laughs> oh, I look over this congregation and if I could look back at me I could say amazing grace. How sweet the sound that though I have not sometimes walked in the truth. God in his mercy and grace has brought me back. And I'm not living perfectly and never will and neither will you. But oh, how sweet it is when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory He sheds on our way. When, he, when we do His good will, He abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. And so I can say with John, and in spite of all the other joys I have, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children, Marty, Melissa, Marie, my grandchildren, all eight of them, and all of you in this building, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. May God help us to rejoice in that, in that joy as well as all the other joys we have is my prayer for Christ's sake.